I might be the wrong person to ask because I'm a bit sick in the head and I like pedaling up hills, but <laughs> is there a way that you can enjoy climbing? There probably is, and we're going to give you some tips in this video. But if you're new to the channel, do subscribe and hit that like button if you want more tips like this in the future. Unless you live in Suffolk, Illinois, maybe Denmark, you probably are going to spend some time riding up and down hills. I mean, mountain bikes, it's in the name. And the first couple of times I actually got the chance to go mountain biking in the mountains, I kind of realised just how amazing, like how much that's what the bikes are for, but you do spend an awful lot of time just riding up a mountain. And on maybe a bigger and enduro bike, something that's slightly more gravity oriented, it, it can be a bit of a drag. So what we're gonna look at today is different techniques, sort of mental stuff, physical and technology based, different ways to make it more enjoyable, bearable, and uh, maybe something that's actually rewarding. I think a lot of the time, sort of the, the riding terrain and habits that I get used to doing is very much steep descent oriented. And it means that the climbs, it does become a bit of a slog. It's sort of very one note and you're just grinding up a road or a fire road. And actually, if I want to enjoy that a little bit more, sort of gain elevation without noticing so much, I try and ride terrain that's a little bit more balanced and mixed, sort of a blend of single track that's ducky and diving through undulations, you're, you're gaining those vertical meters without it being, oh, I'm going up a climb. You know, it's, it's, it's up and down. And before you know it, you can be at the top of the hill again. Unlike Isaac, I'm not a fan of climbing at all. And the longer it is and the more drawn out it is, the more painful it inevitably is too. So even if you're working towards a goal of a certain amount of climbing in a ride, why not try more shorter climbs instead of fewer, longer ones? That way you can carry speed and do shorter intervals on those hills rather than dragging it out. Something that I was taught at quite an early age uh, when I was first going out with mountain bike cycling clubs is the power of being distracted on a climb just for that the mental toll that it can take on you. If you choose a, a slightly more technical option, a winding bit of single track, or this is a pretty actually technical gully to try and hold your speed up, it can, it can go a lot easier than a fire road. You know, it's, it is maybe it might actually take it a little bit longer. It could be more challenging physically, but you, you don't notice it. You're just concentrating on what you're doing, trying to maintain traction, stay on your bike, and it, it's a more rewarding challenge. Another way to distract yourself is to take friends out on a bike ride. Have you ever noticed how quickly time passes when you're having a conversation? Well, that can work on the bike as well. The next thing that I think about sort of just in the mental game of climbing is, is, is polarizing your effort really in terms of either really trying hard and really trying to get the most out of a steep challenging climb like this one at FOD is probably one of the hardest ones in the trail center. It's one they use for local and national races uh, or deciding just that this is an easy one. I'm not, I'm not trying too hard. I'm having a nice time. I'm spinning up the hill, but either way being secure in the knowledge of what I'm doing, the reasoning behind it and really committing to that. For me, while I don't concentrate on a strict training plan that has say zone twos or intervals or anything like that, I know that no matter how I tackle a climb, whether that be gently, it's building a good foundation, maybe endurance, or if I tackle it hard, it may be building strength or a good sprint. Either way, I know that every climb, no matter how I tackle it, is making me a better rider. Uh, whether it's from my side, uh, not all the time, but a fair amount of the time, I might be out following uh, some kind of structured training plan. I'll be riding a particular exertion or sort of power level relative to uh, training zones and that kind of thing. And so I really try and be mindful of that, you know, especially if I'm, I'm maybe not feeling the best, then I can end up really kind of slogging away and being out of zone because I'm just I'm trying to get out of the climb and actually I need to be really aware and mindful of like I'm riding zone three or wherever it actually is sort of relative to my max power and, and, and just being happy with that and controlled and, and accepting the pace that I'm going. Another way that I make myself enjoy climbing more is to, to add these objective goals to it and sort of gamification in terms of the meters I've climbed. Now, a lot of the time I am riding with some kind of head unit and I almost always, I have some idea of sort of the amount of elevation I've gained in, in that ride. There's a lot of other stuff I might use as well, meters descended, gradient, uh, van, max elevation, but just a simple 
running tally of how much I've climbed does help me gain motivation and uh, just tick those meters off. Another way to gamify is to use computers if you can. If you have a Garmin already or a similar computer, a lot of the time you can connect your Strava up to it so that you can get real time feedback on where the segments start and end so that you can race those climbs. You can also use things like Climb Pro, which is a new feature on the Garmin 540s, the 840s and 1040s, where it'll actually tell you how long that climb lasts and what the percentage gradients are. So you can really pace yourself and race yourself to the top, try and get a KOM. Something that I do really get a kick out of is having that total meters climbed at the end of the day and it is important to keep a sense of perspective about it. It's not something I want to become obsessed with or let it get to me if I haven't achieved a certain goal and let that detract from my enjoyment of the ride. But I do really like see or you know like making sure I've I've done my 2K for the week because a K a day keeps the doctor away and like just being able to see at the end of the day that you know every single meter that I climbed, even if it's that's going over a bridge or doing a wheelie, like it, it adds to that total. As well as being a necessary evil to get to the top of the hill in most cases, especially in the UK, uh, I really find that being able to spin my legs and actually ride to the top of the climb, it puts me in the right place to attack a descent. You know, it, it gets my muscles going, firing, my breathing is better, I'm looser, I'm sort of ready to go on the bike. And without that warm up, I, I'm not going to be able to attack a, a sick bit of trail in the way that I'd like to be able to. So if you've ever done an uplift or perhaps got on a gondola to get to the top of a climb, then you'll notice that sometimes you're just not quite switched on ready for those descents. So like Isaac said, you do need to be warmed up. So next time, start to appreciate those climbs because they do actually make you a better descender. And some of us are only in it for the descents. So we've talked about some, some mental techniques and tricks to sort of help you get up those hills without hating it. We've talked about different ways to physically attack a climb, whether that's really pressing on as hard as you can doing a, a training effort or just taking it easy. Finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about bike setup and how you can at least be not on a bike that's not set up for climbing. So obviously you want a comfy saddle for making climbs comfier. Uh, and what we mean by that is having the perfect width, not the amount of uh, foam or padding in there. That won't make a massive difference to comfort. It's more about having the right width saddle for your sit bones so that you support your hips properly. But also for cross country, I tend to have quite a level saddle position because you're descending and climbing and pedaling a long single track as much as you are just out climbing. But on my enduro bike, I tend to prefer a bit of a winch and plummet format where I climb up long fire roads and then I descend with my saddle down. So I don't tend to seat uh, for a single track on my enduro bike, in which case I tend to have my nose a little bit downwards on the bike so that when the bike is pointing upwards, up a climb, it is actually level. And I find that more comfortable on those types of bikes. The proliferation of wide range cassettes and one by drivetrains these days on a mountain bike does mean a lot of the time you are gonna have suitable gears for climbing. And I think something that really made it unfun in the past was having a narrow little block on the back and it being an absolute grind to get up a hill but just taking a little just making sure you've got the right gearing range for me really helps um, this bike has got a 34 tooth ring uh, for racing last year i kind of backed myself i went up to a 36 and actually i kind of i wish i hadn't i think it was a little bit too heavy and too hard on my body so making sure you've got sufficient ratios for turning a nice cadence really helps so like Isaac said, choosing the right gear ratio is not only key to enjoying a climb, but it's also key to reducing risk on your body. Anything below 60 RPM can be quite damaging on the muscles and certainly your joints uh, like your knees. So 60 RPM is generally one full rotation per second. If that's the kind of cadence you've got on a climb, it might be time to consider a smaller chain ring up the front or a bigger chain ring on your cassette at the back, or maybe even just getting off and having a nice little walk. 
It definitely helps me enjoy climbs if I feel comfortable and I sort of set my clothing up for the climb as well, which it, that sometimes means slackening off the dial on the back of my helmet a little bit, just give my head a little bit more breathing room. Something else I do is if I've got a, like a Lycra short liner on underneath my baggy shorts, if I'm pedaling up a fire road, you know, in the Alps for an hour, my shorts rub on my leg and that can be a bit irritating over a week's riding. So it, it does look a bit silly, but I actually roll my shorts up like that above and then I roll them down when I'm actually riding a trail. And finally, if I've got knee pads on, it's that classic, it's a super kooky thing to look at, but this is mountain biking. I pull them down to my ankles, turn them out so they don't rub on the chain ring and the drivetrain, and uh, it just helps my legs articulate more smoothly. I'm not, I don't get any chafing even with the best pads in the world. And, um, and then when I get to the top of the trail, I can roll my shorts down, I pull my pads up, I do my helmet up and I'm, I'm ready to go. Oh, there we go. Even, I mean, even with all of these tips and techniques and just experience I've built up over the years, I wouldn't, I'm not weird. I don't just think about going out and doing climbs all the time and love it, but I definitely do appreciate different terrain, just going out and thrashing myself up a hill. And hopefully this can maybe help you lean to that as well. Yeah, or maybe it will just help you hate climbs a tiny <laughs> little bit just, less, just a little like bit. I hate them. Anyway, if we've missed out any techniques that you use to get you up those climbs, then let us know down in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching. Thank Bye -bye. you.